And just a refresher, if we turn on floor collision, hit W again, and turn on our floor, uh, you have complete control if you have transpose cloth, B, T, C, to go through here and use your transpose to kind of go through here and make this pillow collide, as well as if you want bigger wrinkles, just go down here to simpler geometry. We still have a smooth subdiv of one turned on, so it's going to preview as if you were at sub D1 and we subdivided with the big wrinkles we're going to get at sub D1. And again, if you want to like start contracting, you can just kind of wiggle this here and it'll start contracting inwards. Or if you're using your brush strokes here and you have contract turned on, and let's say X, Y, and Z, uh, as I'm doing this, it's going to start also contracting my entire mesh. Uh, pretty severely, actually. But we'll go ahead and turn this off. And it's like, okay, we've got our, our big primary wrinkle reads. Uh, but now let's go through here and let's up the resolution just one bit. And you know what? Let's push down just a little bit more and we'll get a little bit of a finer read on my wrinkles. This is going to have more geometry. Uh, it's a pretty simple concept. It's going to have more geometry to evaluate and run the simulation on. So of course you're going to get more refined wrinkles. Uh, you can also just sit run simulation as long as you have gravity turned on and it'll drop that pillow down there. Of course it's going to drop fast. So we need to either up our iterations or drop our gravity strength. And that'll go ahead and slow that down so that it has enough time to calculate that. So we'll go ahead and give it some calculations to drop that gravity strength. And there we go. And then again, if we want to go up here to the subdivision level three, we can get really fine wrinkles either, either through you know, simulation or our brushes. We can go in here to brush BC slide. And then as you're sliding this mesh, uh, you're going to get much finer uh, wrinkle detail. So now we've kind of touched on cloth brushes uh, a little bit. So let's talk a little bit more about those. Uh, the first one I'm going to bring up is BC S, which is cloth pinch trails. And what that's going to do is I can pull through here and it's going to include, if I go and grab my brush menu, and go down here to modifiers, you're going to see there's a trails option. So if you hover over this and you hold down control to give you more information, essentially what it's going to do is as I'm dragging this down and we have uh, on brushed on, so it's kind of containing that simulation on the surface effect. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a nice full pillow again. And we'll go up to session level three. So we got plenty of geometry and we have a smooth subdiv of one. So we're getting a preview beyond that. And essentially what that's doing is as I continue to drag, uh, depending on how high your trails is, it's going to keep recalculating this. So if I do this uh, through here, and just like anything else uh, with a simulation, if you go really fast, you're going to get a different result than if you go throw, and then if you go slow and give it time to recalculate. So if I go through here and just kind of pull a seam through, that's the result I'm going to get. If I crank up my trails to 100 and then pull through, you're going to see as I'm pulling, it's constantly reapplying that same brush stroke uh, upstream. Now this is a little intense, so maybe we'll drop that down to like 16 or something. But essentially what I'm trying to get at is if, if you're running your cloth sim and you notice that like, you know, let's drop this down to one actually. If you're running this cloth sim and it's like, hey, I'm running the cloth sim, but everything behind it, it just starts fading away. That cloth sim is going hey, I'm trying to maintain these relationships, so I'm going to continue pushing uh, while you're doing this brush stroke. So that's where you need to come in here to trails and say, hey, you know what? Keep reapplying that brush stroke upstream so that I can maintain those wrinkles. So you can kind of get uh, a little bit more of a consistent line. So here I went ahead and subdivided one more time. So you can kind of see this. So again, trails down to one. It's not reapplying my stroke. Trails up, and there it goes. It starts uh, reapplying upstream. One more thing we can demonstrate with this brush is if you go over here to stroke, there's a new option uh, for jitter and brush imperfection. Uh, brush imperfection up to one. If I go through here and just kind of tap on my mesh, you're going to see it's applying just a bit of noise along with the brush. You can use this similar to like brush surface noise. You can actually add surface noise to your brush strokes. Uh, this is another way to add noise as you're making brush strokes. And this isn't cloth specific. This is just brush information. But since we're talking about uh, strokes here, um, so we're going to turn brush impression imperfection down to one and then stroke jitter is the next one. So I'm going to pull another cloth trails through here and we'll drop this back down to 10. So here's our cloth trails results. And again, if we go slower, it gets a slightly different result. And again, if you want to fade out that on brush, just change that fade border up and that'll give you a little bit more uh, leeway around the stroke. Also, you can hold down Alt if you want to kind of pinch out and do a uh, kind of a outer pucker if you want. 
and then uh, back here under stroke, we're going to take the stroke jitter up to one. And now you're going to see this alpha kind of dances around. As I'm pulling straight through, it kind of jumps back and forth and left to right. So that's just, again, pulling that alpha, giving you a little bit more variation and, and well, jitter as it bounces around. So you can use those to kind of give yourself, again, a little bit of variation in your brush stroke. Another big one is transpose cloth, BTC. We've already talked about this a bunch. Essentially, this allows you to control, let's turn back on floor collision. Uh, this allows you to control this cloth. So I'm going to drop down, down to sort of level two again, just boom. Now, uh, again, if we move this transpose around, that allows you to dictate how and when and where the trough is the cloth is transposing and uh, simulating as well as if you go in here to expand and just wiggle you can just run the simulation it's a movement so as you're moving it's going to be uh, iterating so it's going to be evaluating your mesh and this one doesn't seem to have it's not on brush you're moving the entire object of course you can mask half your object and then it's only going to do this or if you want to flip that again go to unmasked and now it's going to run up here on the mask section but that's the basics of the transpose cloth Let's kind of run through these. Let's go BC cloth ball. And this is a, kind of reminds me of, I think, just like a standard brush. Let's go ahead and turn off expand. So as we run cloth ball, it just kind of puts a ball underneath the surface and kind of makes it act like a Newtonian fluid. I mean, depending on how much, again, how much subdivisions you have on your mesh, uh, what, ex uh, what you have over here as far as like firmness and strength and stuff is going to dictate the result you get from that brush. Or if you hold down alt, you know, that's going to be give you another type of result. It basically uh, sh shapes the surface as if it's a, a sphere underneath the surface. Let's go B, C. Uh, cloth dimple we already talked about. Uh, here's cloth fold. This is going to scrunch and twist the surface, and it's, it's a good way to just kind of get uh, some slight wrinkles in here. Again, hold down Alt and let go of Alt, and that'll kind of fold that surface over one another. So let's see, it kind of wants to... Let's go ahead and turn our floor off kind of wants to rotate around a uh, surface. And some of these may work better on other types of surface. So we go back to our plain 3D here and we say make poly mesh 3D, turn on dynamic, smooth subdiv up to two. And you know what, let's hit control D a couple times. So even with this surface, as we do fold, you know, make a big fold brush, maybe go in here and put on a little inflate, you know, you might get a little bit of a different idea of what these uh, brushes can do. Let's hit B, C, cloth hook. This is, this is one of my favorites for manipulating cloth. It's basically you're just you going in here and just grabbing this cloth and pulling it um, around. So you can kind of just go through here and you can use this to kind of bunch up cloth or get kind of you know, make a big brush and kind of shape cloth in the direction that you want. And we do have inflate turned on. So while we're doing this, uh, it could be doing a slight inflate as we're deforming this. Uh, and again, if you want bigger wrinkles, just drop that subdivision down. And now you've got big, big uh, primary reads as your folds here. So that's cloth hook. Here's cloth inflate, pretty self-explanatory. You can go through here and you can kind of inflate the cloth as you go. Let's go ahead and add some subdivisions back. And you can drop the Z intensity down on this brush. You can hold down Alt and that'll kind of deflate the object. Again, the more subdivision you have, the more it's gonna give you uh, wrinkle information. And again, you can add uh, any of these settings over here to get the look you want. But you know, it's an easy way to kind of go through and just kind of provide a little inflate on this cloth. Now this is on a closed object. If we go back to our plane that we were working with, plane test, um, you know, on a single sided object, cloth inflate might have a little bit of a different effect as you're kind of pushing and pulling this plane around. Let's go ahead and add some thickness here. Cloth move. Again, you're just kind of moving the cloth around based on your brush size. Uh, you get different effects on here. And if you have a collision volume and you're using cloth move, uh, remember you can use this to, uh, if you're moving, we're going to get into Z model later and you can move points and snap to surface. This is also a way for you to move and we'll talk more about this when we get there. You can use this to kind of move along a collision surface. So you can move big bulks, big bulky areas of geometry and have it stick to collision surface as you move. So not only a cloth simulation, but also think in terms of moving geometry with collision surfaces and uh, what kind of effects you can achieve with that. Cloth nudge is similar. You just It's going to slightly move the surface and allow you just to kind of nudge it into place if you want to just kind of give little hints of uh, wrinkles or indicate direction. 
uh, cloth pinch is just going to pull the surface together. So if I just kind of just roll this on the surface, it's going to start folding and it collapsing the uh, surface on itself. And if you hold down Alt, it will kind of collapse out toward you. So that's just a good way to kind of go through here and kind of pull cloth together or push it away from you and kind of pinch in the middle. And of course, that's related to cloth pinch trails, which we already talked about, you know, going through here and pinching trails along here. Cloth pull is good at dragging a surface, so similar to move, similar to these other ones like cloth hook and stuff, but really, really useful for like how you want to control how a piece of cloth drapes. You know, you can use simulation to get there, but you can also use this brush again to indicate direction or to fine tune uh, your simulation. Cloth, si a cloth slide is going to lift the surface and as it moves it, so you're going to see it kind of raises up as you're moving it. And of course, Alt is going to do the opposite. It's going to kind of lower that mesh here. But then as you move, it's going to deform and start creating wrinkles uh, as you go. So that would be kind of an interesting way to kind of, as you pull something through, start bunching up wrinkles uh, on the side here. Cloth twister is interesting. It'll go through and it'll uh, basically twist this cloth. You hold down Alt to make it twist in the opposite direction. And this gets into brush creation. Um, I'm going to get into that later, but I'm going to use this as an example of an easy brush to create. But it's a pretty cool brush to kind of go through here and just kind of ball up areas of cloth. Cloth wind, again, self-explanatory. It's going to kind of push through and push objects uh, away from the surface. If you have a collision object, it'll push it over and around. So like a dress uh, in this example, it'll kind of push and move and blow that cloth around. Of course, holding down Alt kind of does like an inflate. I mean, I guess it inflates the other direction too, but you can use this as an alternative to inflate. And I'm going to go back to cloth dimple. There's something I didn't mention. Let's go back to our... Uh, pillow here. So we have cloth dimple and it's set to, at least I don't think I did. If I did, I apologize. So we're going to pull cloth dimple out and again, we're doing a fade border, crank that up, get a little bit of a smooth, smooth fold off. And also again, if you drag rect out and then you just kind of wiggle, that's just going to run the cloth simulation without increasing the size. So drag out to the size you want and then kind of wiggle your brush and that'll just keep running that simulation on the existing relationships. Alternatively, or you can also do this if you want to make them all the same size, go in here and change it to drag dot. Now you, when you go in here and you drag dot, it may be like, oh, I'm dragging it around, but it's just like leaving a trail. So what you're going to want to do is drag dot and it's going to start doing the deformation, then just, again, just wiggle in place, and that'll keep it about the same size. So if you want to make them all the same size, this is how you would go about doing that. 